right, we are back for another episode of TriMet Board Meeting, the most boring public meeting you'll ever see. Uh, thanks to Pootie, I have a lot of extra time that I've been able to do other things. Uh, he did all the calls, and so I wasn't stuck all day dealing with them. Uh, I don't know how those guys do those calls so fast. I'm not, it takes me a long time to go through that goddamn library there. Anyway, thanks to him, I have a little extra time. I might even have time to watch TV today before I go to bed. Uh, so let's get on this. Um, point of order, point of order. You know, TriMet doesn't have their service restored, which is an automatic failing grade. As far as I'm concerned, as far as, the, you know, you're going to hear nothing but sure. I finally figured out what these board meetings actually are. They're advertisements for TriMet, okay? <laughs> That's what they are. They're, they're simply ad campaigns. Because everybody involved in these meetings is nothing but a cheerleader for TriMet at all times. There's no criticisms allowed. And you don't hear any criticism. You hear very minor very minor criticisms and that never amount to anything. So the board meetings are just an advertising thing. I mean, they're required by law to have the meeting. So they have it, you know, a public meeting. But we already know that who runs this agency is the executives. It's a big, it's a big fountain of money for the executive staff and all of their cronies and everybody that's in, involved. It's a big, it's a big tax funded fountain now i keep hearing they runs canceled no relief uh and now this is curious to me because trimet cut service 20 percent for the first six months and now the service is cut 10 percent. so how the hell and they didn't have any layoffs so how the hell are they short operators? I mean, they're, they're always short operators. From way back in my day, they're always short. They don't want to hire operators, you see, because that costs them money. And that means less money for pork barrel projects and, and executive uh, pay and executive positions. You know, they're always adding various executive positions that have nothing to do with anything except empire building. So here we are in a situation where there is no, they don't have enough drivers. Apparently they don't even have enough buses still. So how do they get in that situation? I, it's massive fail on the executive staff's part. But as was pointed out to me by one of my favorite Twitter people called at Headways Matter, it was pointed out to me that this is the same thing everywhere. <laughs> Every transit agency is operating with the same MO right now. Their budgets have gone up. Their service has gone down. Okay, so this isn't unique to TriMet. This is like a, a template that's been established. You know, these executives all talk together. They get notifications from the FTA. They get notifications from each other. They get notifications from APTA. So they're all planning their stuff very similar. That's why everything is so similar. But, I mean, it's a massive fail. TriMet's a massive fail. And no matter what they're saying here, until they restore their service and make it reliable, it's still not reliable. There's a half a dozen max screw-ups a day. Until they can make this system frequent and reliable, it's, failure. it's a failed system. It's a failure, okay? Let's just tell you what it is. And I know only a handful of people will even bother watching this. That's okay with me because... I, I have this for my library. You know, I have a library of TriMet-related material. I collect this. And, and so I enjoy the, I enjoy the topic. I, I collect, and I, I'm enjoying this new woke board. And so let's get right back into it. You know, come on now, you, you people over here, you got to get your shit together, okay? You got to get your service restored, and you got to get enough operators and you need to do whatever you need to do to do that, okay? Meanwhile, they're funding all these pork barrels, pork barrel delight. And it's like they're not, they're, they're not connected to the reality of the world at all, which doesn't surprise me. I mean, say you see the same thing with Wheeler, for example. 
or Kafori, Kif whoever the head, head of the, I mean, they have so many layers of government in Portland. It's just amazing. They're not connected to reality. These people are all parasites on the rest of us. They've all been able to become part of this corrupted system. And all of these board members are all cronies of the governor in one way or another. And they are all keep this system going. So let's hear. Guy Ben, uh, we heard about the Fuller Road Station sure in Clackamas County, where there's yeah, cool. uh, construction that's underway for 100% uh, affordable housing units. See, see, they're they're talking about affordable housing. What's a transit district doing? You know, you hear that word. Word. This is one of the big another scam. I I realize is is right in front of our face. You know, when they do these homeless uh tax increases it's always for quote affordable housing what that actually means is the money that they raise goes to the developer shills it doesn't go to any home the money doesn't go to any homeless people it's all going to the developer shills and the developer shills own most cities in america these days that's where the big money is I mean, what what is TriMet doing involved with this? They're supposed to be a transit district, but they've been hijacked by the developer shills for the advantage of those elites. To the Fuller Road Max Station, um, we heard about the Hollywood. Transit. I mean, what a nerve they have talking about transit-oriented development while while ridership is down half. I mean, what nerve, you know? So either you don't pay attention at all, or you're just lying. I mean, you're just they're just saying this is happening even though nobody's riding. What are you doing with transit-oriented development right now when nobody's riding transit? You mean you're going to develop this shit no matter what? Is that that's what they're saying? Transit Center and um, Director Edwards alluded to that project as well. Design work is ongoing and there are there are applications for uh, Metro affording, affordable housing bond funding. Um, we heard about uh, area plans <clears throat> associated with the Better Red project. Better Red, Better Red. I mean, what is that? <laughs> I mean, Jim Howe, one of the most expert, uh, he worked at TriMet in the 70s or the early 80s as a planner, okay? He has inside knowledge. I, all I do is watch all of it. He, he has... The better red is is a joke, and they just came. I mean, the executive staff just came up with this themselves, and the puppets approved. I mean, that's two hundred million dollars down the drain for nothing. What it does nothing. It does nothing. And Jason, you know, my buddy Jason, who likes to argue with me on the Twitter, there we're actually friends, but he likes to he likes to bust my balls for some reason when it comes to the social media. He'll say, "Well, it's going to improve." tracking at the goddamn gateway <laughs> you know he comes up with a million excuses for the trimet boondoggles it's a complete waste of money okay at least division you get some new buses out of the deal okay and at least there's something i mean i think division is a waste of money too but it's not as big a waste of money as this better red is the better red is strictly a light rail mafia thing who heard about efforts to develop a TOD work plan that's going to be kind of a template going forward for TOD development. And uh, finally, we heard oh, yeah. about uh, construction. All right, stop the presses. Southwest stop the presses. And Salmon, a residential project. We, we got a little, uh, hold on here. On okay, stop this for a minute. We got a notification from the Ripster here. It's a division... The division fly through. We we're just talking about this, so let's see it. Oh, look! <laughs> these are cool. I'll say this: these videos are cool. I do like these. I absolutely do. Okay, now these are very helpful too. They'll they'll show you the route. Look at how good. Look at the. <laughs> is this drone? Is it a drone that did this or what? Must be right. So there goes. There's a bus stop sign. <laughs> okay. There it goes. Is it which is is it going over the? Where is it going? Bridge of the no. Where is it going? Oh, it is going over bridge of the people. 
Bridge of the Oligarchs. Wait a minute. Yeah, okay. There it goes. It looks like... Uh, it looks like the uh, four, or I guess it used to be the four. Now it's the two. <laughs> Cesar Chavez, where we call it 39th. Look at it. Oh, it's Google Earth. They're just using Google Earth. It's not a drone. <laughs> See how how far between stops here. I don't know how disabled people will access this bus. It's going to be a little bit more of a problem. Okay, okay. Mid County Health Center. Well, look at that, folks. And there's Gresham. All right, well. Oh, wait, it keeps going? It goes past Gresham Transit Center? Wow, where the hell is it going? Oh, that's right. That. Okay, it goes all the way to Cleveland now. Well, that's new. I think, anyway. I don't, I don't really remember. All right, well, thank you very much for that great flyover. It looks, that's a bus route. <laughs> it's just like every other bus route former TriMet parking lot. Uh, so that's a, a really uh, positive um, uh, contribution to the housing stock in downtown Portland. It was great to hear that's being completed. See? Yeah. And that is the end of the Finance and Audit Committee. Report. See, it's all about property development. Thank it's you. all bullshit. Um, does anyone have any questions for uh, Dr. Director Bauman? I must say, I found that um, I actually listen to that report as well and i mean the the i was in the meeting as well and and it was really exciting news and i would i'm excited um, yeah right. uh, general manager to sue uh, to uh, have a briefing for the full board on our efforts and the status of our efforts on transit oriented development it's very exciting um, yeah exciting um, moving ass. on um if there are no questions i'll ask director way to present the report First on the Metro Policy Advisory Committee meeting, and then eventually she'll also present the report on um, the Transit Equity Advisory Committee. All right. We two reports today. <laughs> I'm so lucky. <laughs> you're, you're such a busy board member. Okay, <laughs> yes. Uh, um, well, hello. Good morning, everyone. And congratulations, uh, Dr. Simmons, on your, on your new role. And See how they all suck each other's dicks? It's like, it's this never-ending love fest. It's like really disgusting, man. Somebody like me on that board would be... <laughs> oh, man, they'll never have... They'll never have any real people that actually talk like real language on these boards. Director Kim, um, congratulations as well. Um, really looking forward to serving. Yeah, they have the politically correct board, don't they? I mean, holy shit. <laughs> Oh, man. So I, I'm sure they've done, this has all been intentional for some reason. So they, they lost their tax increase, so they have to project a new image. So I, I, I imagine this is what this is all about. Project the in, image of this diversity, and maybe we'll be able to trick people into handing over their money. With you on the board. Um, so uh, Director Simmons is right. Um, I do have two reports. Um, and that's because I'm transitioning out of impact. Who do you want to date with you, Kathy? And heading into TIAC. So um, first starting with impact, um, there were two um, main items that was discussed. The first, <laughs> we heard a presentation Wait a minute, from... Stop a second. This tweet from, <laughs> from New, Jersey, New Jersey advocates. There are 13 New Jersey transit board seats required to be filled with Rasmussen arrested and resignation. 
there are now one of the one of the New Jersey transit board members got arrested. <laughs> Don't like that good old East Coast corruption, man. In the Port of Portland regarding their seismic resilient runway discussion. Um, Port of Port of Portland staff presented to MPAC. Um, uh, their response and re resilience approach um, over the last year, and more specifically around seismic resilience. A right. seismic resilience runway would be able to withstand the ground motion and shaking of a major Cascadia subduction zone earthquake. Um, the intent would really be to focus on protecting the south runway, which is further from the river. The project, unfortunately, does not qualify for um, a specific grant from the federal administration, um, although this may change in the future. Um, and even with the funds, um, they're abbreviated for short it's AIP funds, um, they would not fully cover the cost of the project. And so staff is really hoping to um, get more region-wide support, um, and they are also asking for Congress um, for funds for this project. And as you can imagine, um, if, um, you know, we are, if in the unfortunate event that we are hit with, um, an earthquake, uh, we need to be ready and we need to be prepared in our region. So this is pretty significant. Um, the second topic included um, a wonderful panel um, of housing advocates and providers around really addressing and breaking down barriers to affordable housing. Um, so those panelists consisted of REACH CDC staff, Hacienda CDC, the Housing Authority of Clackamas County, Bien Star and Marnella Holmes. Um, and just a few takeaways from this discussion. Um, it's really just to, uh, to provide more housing at all income levels, um, including middle income housing. And we know that the region is just facing an affordable housing crisis. Um, and so this was an expert panel um, on how do we continue to build more affordable housing in the region. Um, there is also an optic of how expensive affordable housing, um, building affordable housing can be. Um, and then folks have noted that it also takes some time to get through the planning and the approval process, um, and that that could be quite lengthy. Um, and, uh, you know, one of the other barriers is, is having um, assets to fund the project. Um, as well as partnering with financial institutions. So, um, so there was a lot of um, great information from that panel, and uh, I also raised um, TriMet's work around TOD and how, as a transit provider, we're also making some headway to make sure that more folks in our region have um, uh, affordable housing options as they're also taking transit. See, what is she, she's talking about property development, and that's what's wrong with your system. This is not what you should be talking about. You should be talking about your bus service and why is it why is it shit, shit. But she's talking about this, which has nothing to do with your bus service and nothing to do with transit at all, actually. And it, um, and then I was going to if I don't know if Director Kim uh, would like to do this. I know that he'll be taking over from me on impact, but there are two um, uh, agenda items as a preview for this upcoming meeting. So I don't know if Director Kim, do you want me to um, mention that, or do you want to? Uh, would you please? And of course, starting tonight's impact meeting, I'll, I'll be attending and fully taking over starting next board meeting. Thank you. Absolutely. Yes. No. No problem. Um, so the next meeting um, for impact will cover two things: a supportive housing services update. Um, this was a um, a measure that voters have approved. So what, are we um, what are we on to, here? Uh, really address chronic homelessness. Oh, this is Metro Policy um, Advisory. Region, and um, it is funded by two separate taxes. So first, a 1% personal income tax on taxable income above $125,000 oh, oh. for individuals and $200,000 for those filing jointly. Oh, 200. And a 1% business income tax on net income for businesses with gross receipts above $5 million. Um, this is really the first program at Metro that uses personal and business income taxes, and it is the first local personal income tax in the region since Multnomah County's personal income tax ended in 2006. Uh, tax collections began in April of 2021, and through June 2021, over $1.5 million have been already collected. 
And of that, $1.2 million has been distributed uh, to local implementation partners in Clackamas, Washington, and Multnomah County. Um, and again, the, um, the overall goal of this is to really address and end um, homelessness in our, in our region. Yeah, you're doing, a, um, this, you're doing a great job. They're doing no job, okay? Nothing is happening. These are poverty pimps. They're doing no, they're not getting anybody off the street. None of this stuff is working. Second point is uh, a legislative update. So Metro staff will be sharing their recent legislative highlights from this past session, uh, which will include tra um, transportation, housing, land use, um, recycling, and other important topics. It's nothing to do with TriMet. Um, and as Director Kim mentioned, he will be taking over impact. Um, so really looking forward to, um, to the continuing work of our involvement um, in that committee. Uh, so before I go to TIAC, any questions? I know that was a lengthy um, impact report. Are there any questions for Director Way? It was really informative. Thank you so much. Oh, thank yes, you. I, I, have a, I have a question. Um, in the, um, in the um, work that's going to be done around the homeless, uh, helping them, is there, a, is there a plan that's available to the public? to see how they plan on going about this and administering that, the plan, and how the plan is going to be implemented? Yes, Director Edwards, that's an excellent question. So um, I will uh, direct uh, folks to check out Metro's website. Um, there's a, if you go on their website, there it's called the Supportive Housing um, Services Measure, and um, they have a whole implementation plan. Um, that has been submitted uh, by the committee, and um, you can look at the progress as well as the timeline um, for for everything. So um, Metro has done a really great job of providing just oversight and transparency so that folks can really track this progress. Um, and uh, so I would encourage folks to yeah, check boring, out hurry up, move it along. Yeah, there might be some staff members from Metro here. Too. Yeah, nice, move along. Hurry they up. can also certainly follow. Come on, up. go get. Move. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Any further questions for Director Way? Hearing none, um, I'll ask you to then move on to the TIAC um, committee. Thank you. Okay, okay TIAC. Okay, awesome. Yes. Um, so uh, TIAC, yes, well, Director Gonzalez has just done an amazing job um, over the yeah, last... Yeah, there they go. They're, they all... <laughs> there goes the dick sucking. Everybody's fantastic when you're on the TriMet board. Everybody loves everybody else. It's a great, everything is great and fantastic. Everybody's great. Here serving on TIAC, and so I will be uh, taking over. Um, and Where's I'm excited Ozzie? to join us my first meeting uh, in August. Uh, just a quick summary of the July meeting. Uh, staff provided an update um, in partnership with the Oregon Health Association, um, TriMet partnered with 83 community-based organizations to provide over 30,000 day passes to oh. help community members get to oh. and from um, COVID vaccine appointments um, and clinics across the region. Um, and the transit-oriented development team also just um, discussed a facilitated um, session around the Hollywood project that many of us have already have heard in our very... See, there, here it is, Rippy. The Hollywood project is moving forward. There was never, there was never a question about it. This committee, um, so received some feedback on that. Um, TF members also received an invitation from Lisa Strader, who is the PBOT ADA coordinator, um, to a July City Council public hearing. Um, it's an invitation to review and adopt the PBOT ADA Title II public right-of-way transition plan. Um, staff also provided an update um, and discussed TIAC areas of interest in the coming year through a survey. Um, and Very the lovely. initial results show that TF members would like to see the agency pursue more community partnerships and fair support. Uh, about half of the TF members have completed the survey and staff are working to gather feedback from additional uh, TF committee members uh, to really plan the work ahead for the next year. And then finally, staff shared an updated timeline on the fair subsidy research project and asked for volunteers to help grade the potential proposals that should be available for review in late August. And um, overall, it was a great uh, conversation. 
um, great participation, and the next meeting is August 10th. Um, and I will just also say that I've also been um, meeting with uh, uh, John Gardner, who heads our um, equity work in the agency, as well as um, looking forward to just connecting more with TF members um, as I get started. So Very that's good. all I have for the support. Thank yeah, you lovely. so much. Any questions for Director May? No. No no questions on my side. Ozzy, please, bring us Ozzy, bring him. In and helping represent as liaison with TIA. Look at that it's smile, Ozzy, baby. And I couldn't be more thrilled that they get to collaborate with you and you with them. Thank hey, boy, you. Ozzy, we love you, Ozzy. Thank you so much. So now, it, now it's our turn to hear from our general manager. For All right. Sammy time. Sammy time, folks. Board. Um, uh, General Manager Dassou, it's it's your time. It's Sammy time. Well, good morning, President we have Mr. Simmons Smiley. and members this. of the board. Look at that smile. He's got quite the smile, is not he? Look at that. Look at that smile on him. Staff and the public, just thank you all for being here this morning. Uh, President Simmons, I just want to let you know that... Um, First of all, I feel like one of the luckiest persons in the United States to work for a very diverse board that's <laughs> diverse and inclusive. Oh, jeez. And I uh, just want to tell you how lucky I am to, to be part of TriMet. Yeah, so, yeah. So you already told us that. Here you um, go. First, I want to dr address, before I go into the update, I want to address the new flyer issue uh, that Hector brought forward. I um, want to let all of you know on the board that we currently have no purchase plans to buy buses from New Flyer. So we have no purchase plans at oh. the current moment. And as you stated, uh, President Simmons. Oh, did you hear that? That was in regard to the only testimony that we heard on the last episode where he said the Alabama plant discriminates, which wouldn't be a surprise because it's in Alabama. <laughs> but he says they're not buying any New Flyers. We will look into the issues that he brought forward. So yeah, they'll look into it and get get back to the board. They never get back to the board. Never, by the way. Never. They never get back to the board on anything. They say they'll get back, but it never happens. Take care of that. So this morning, I will be sharing timely information with you on our COVID nineteen oh, pandemic, something, something our June ridership report. <sighs> we will review the safety and security division's annual report, and I will touch on the experience that we had during this historic heat wave in late June. Yeah, let's hear it. Come on. And then finally, we will introduce uh, you to one of our... Yeah, members. your historic transit failure, you mean? Just say what it is. Yes, our system failed. We stranded hundreds, if not thousands of riders, and we weren't prepared. Tell it like it is, Sammy. Any unsung heroes at TriMet, a assistant, man assistant supervisor, Oops. actually, <laughs> with our facilities team who showed outstanding commitment and dedication uh, during the extreme heat. So let me start off first with the COVID update. Oh, um, wait. We do not have a lot of new developments right now to report this morning on COVID. However, we are watching the impact of the Delta variant right now, Delta. especially with cases edging higher across Oregon. We will continue to look to the expertise of the Oregon Health Authority um, and also the CDC. We're, we're taking precautions right now when and where appropriate to be safe and prevent the spread of the virus. Um, that includes the federal requirement that riders and employees wear masks while riding buses and trains and as also at transportation hubs. I've, I've, the federal requirement that has no actual teeth, so it's not an actual requirement. It's just a way to make the public hate each other. And, you know, they, they, these, these so-called leaders must be aware that it's creating chaos in the country. And that's what they like. They like chaos. They like it when the, when the public is fighting with each other. They, they strive to split us apart here. I've heard from our customer service team that received calls and contacts about the mask requirement that the calls have declined over the last several weeks. We still have free masks on board our vehicles for anyone who needs them. I also should note that early data suggests that riders are returning to the system. 
as we move forward. So kind of transitioning into our June 2021 ridership report, um, June was the highest recorded month on TriMet system since March of 2020. Well, that would make sense, wouldn't it? They supposedly opened the state, right? COVID was beaten, and now it's not beaten. We win the COVID war. It's beaten. But no, nah, they were lying. Oops. Our system, uh, system-wide ridership provided nearly 3.587 million rides. Um, that breaks down. <laughs> 3.587 million rides. They won't tell you how many people use the system. They like to say rides because rides makes it look like millions and millions of people are riding the TriMet. But, you know, a ride is every time you step on and off a bus or a train. So to an average of about 842,000 rides per week. Um, oh, that's, that's not that many. That's 20% over June of 2020, but it's down 56% compared to pre-pandemic ridership or 2019. So to take a look at this by mode, um, our bus ridership increased nearly 30% since this time last year. Our max ridership increased about 6%, and then we saw no change on West. <laughs> West. West, the biggest scam going, man. Let's sign a 50-year contract, and then we'll tell everybody we can't get out of it. Sorry, public. We signed a 50-year contract, and uh, we can't get out of it. Fucking criminal. So I'm going to pause here. Uh, I'm going to transition over to our safety and security annual report. And I would like to invite Executive Director of Safety and Security, Marla Black, to present the annual report from the Safety and Security Division. This, this report here is the, the past fiscal year, so FY21. So I'll just go ahead and turn it over to you, Marla. Good morning. Good morning, Sam. Good morning, Ms. Board, President Simmons. I will be providing a very high level report, a brief of the FTA and state reporting oversight reportable items. And these are actions that result in severe outcomes. And next slide, please. What's going on, Mr. <clears throat> what do we got here? So our count and outcomes for the 2020 calendar Let's year. Let's see this. Collision and rail crossing. Okay. Collision at real 24 collisions. Wow. Is it for the year? Two injuries. One person. Did, I thought there was more than that. One? We had 101 reportable events and hazards. 101. 13 were reported as severe outcomes. Two were fatalities. Three serious injuries with eight significant property damages. Oh, okay. Okay. Wait. So there's two fatalities and three serious injuries and eight property it's 25,000 or more there's a fly flying around here with my fly swatter ODOT has specific event categories and if the incident does not fall into that category then we would denote it under a severity of outcome so it quantifies that outcome in general things like serious injury means broken bones and internal damage burns to the body, and amputations. Next slide. A total of 35 train collisions met reporting criteria in one or more of the reporting categories, which is down from 39 from last year. One involved another train... Okay, wait, wait. 35 train collisions, that sounds about right. Involved another one... A train versus bus? I don't remember... Wow, I don't remember that. Do you re remember that one, Rippy? Does I don't remember that. Okay, motor vehicle, a 24 cars and 10, 10 events involving a person or a bicycle. Wow, that's very unsafe. That vehicle, a bus, which occurred in the central business district at low speed and resulted in minor damage. 24 involved a motor vehicle within a grade crossing and all of those with passenger vehicles. 10 involved a person or bicyclist, eight were pedestrians, two were bicyclists, 
And of these, one resulted in a fatal injury and one resulted in a serious injury based on what was ascertained at the time. Next slide. Looking at our, comparing our data year to year over the last um, five years, the data points do show a, a trending downward since 2016. So this is good news. Next slide. It is of no surprise that the Central Business District has a larger number of collisions due to the dynamic operational environment it's with other types here. of traffic. While we do see more collisions, the good news is, is that we do operate at a lower speed, and these are generally low or no severity incidents. Burnside does have roadway separation, but there is a significant amount of vehicle, vehicles with left turn intrusions. We do see many driver areas in our right of ways from left turn Get intrusions, such as Holiday Get 6 out. or 11. <sighs> which prohibits left turns at Holiday and Grand, crossing in front of our trains against a red on a one way. So it's confusing for our drivers. Yes. Next slide. It sure is. It is important to understand the operational environments that our light rail vehicles do operate in. Some of the trackway is protected by fencing, restricted traffic, it's transit vehicle only areas or street running protected areas, gated crossings, curbing, lane striping, ballast and non-ballast trackways. This particular slide den denotes all of the incidents or collisions or in the downtown area. The trains in this area do not have the same protections as our other areas on our system and are running an embedded track which can easily be intruded by not only vehicles, but pedestrians. It is important that safety tracks these you, stations to see what, if any, additional mitigations may arise in the near future. Our Sixth Avenue sees an increased amount of tail swing collisions at the north end due to train movement on Irving. So it, while we can't really change that dynamic environment that they are working in, we can always look to see if there's ways to mitigate the signage or other striping. Next slide. Trident's Rail Incident Review Board examines train accidents and incidents to determine if the operator could likely have prevented the event by uh -oh. using defensive operator strategies and uh -oh. techniques. The board found that of the majority of collisions, the rail operator could not have avoided the collision. In most of the events, the rail operator had too little time to react. Next slide. Um, our, uh, based on the direction from the CPC and as part of the fiscal year 21 budget, the project will advance physical safety enhancements to another grade crossing. Um, well, I'm not going to focus a lot on the rail pedestrian uh, safety initiatives. I do want to let the board know that we are prioritizing all of the rail pedestrian safety initiatives moving forward. Our safety and security initiatives for 2021, we are completing this at grade crossing study and risk ranking model to help define which rail pedestrian crossings we should prioritize for funding in the near future. The methodology and efforts will continue to fiscal year 21. This is a new initiative and we're actually uh, partnering with one of Cutter with Research to determine if our risk ranking tool will be replicable what, they got another to contractor in here? agencies Jesus. across the nation. Uh, Community <laughs> listening. I mean, you know, we've been going through this for a de more than a decade since Dol Dollar Sturdy used to be an advocate for safety. Nothing has changed. They haven't done anything. It's the same shit. It's all bullshit. It had also given an update around the Crash Advisory Committee, and that will be an initiative that will carry on for the next year. And safety management system. This is the new initiative that we have changed from a system safety plan to an agency safety plan focusing on behavior change in the work environment to redu reduce workplace injuries. And the safety management system, um, as the board recalls in October of last year, 
we, the board approved our new agency safety plan or PTAS, what it was called before, PTASP, so now agency safety plan. Staff at the safety program is working really hard to develop an implementation plan to roll out the safety management system agency-wide. Uh, recently, TriMet was highlighted at an APTA conference show, showcasing our efforts around safety management system and how we're proposing rolling out this agency safety plan with our ODOT uh, partners, our state safety oversight partner. So we will be working heavily in this next year, working on that implementation and rollout. Next slide. In our security program, while the board is very aware of our reimagined public safety initiatives for the security program, we will be coming back to the board with our reimagined public safety highlights and updates for you at a separate board meeting. But I do want to highlight that the uh, Multnomah County Sheriff's Office is now our new command agency leading our transit police efforts. All of our law enforcement partners have signed their uh, intergovernmental agreements. Oh boy. And we are working on signing a new intergovernmental agreement with Washington County Sheriff's Office to provide oh, yippee. behavioral health care mental health crisis team. Yeah, right. To Where's Washington your crisis County. team, mother? So we're very excited. Did you hear that, Rippy? Where's the fucking crisis team? Fuck! excited about that coming forward, and we hope to have that team hitting the ground very soon. We're also um, working with our unarmed security personnel, which is our G4S and our PPI contact, con sorry, contracts. Um, for the board's awareness, G4S will be having the name change, and it will be allied security. I think there was an ownership change with G4S. And so you may find some changing in the nomenclature of the naming of those contracts in the future. And I just want you to know that it's the same staff and that there's no staffing changes. It's just the company name change. Um, our other programs that we have in the security program is our code compliance program, which is our customer safety supervisors. We have an emergency manager program, and we do have a new emergency manager, Ian Stewart, who, jo who joined us earlier this year. And Ian has hit the ground running and started his first day on the job was, I think, our winter storm. And so he has dealt with winter storms, extreme heat, and COVID. All and you failed at all of them. Okay, you have failures. Uh, your security, I don't know, your security, I don't really know what they can do about the security problem. I mean, the first thing to do would be get the bus operators to stop making mountains out of molehills. That might help. At one time, welcome Ian to what a great challenge emergency. She's manager. retiring. She's going to take her fat pension. Training drills and exercises will be what our, will be in the new coming year. And we hope to roll out incident command system classes for any person in TriMet who wants to join those classes. Our physical infrastructure protection system has been upgraded. We've upgraded our cameras, we've upgraded some of the technology, and we've, uh, I hope the board will be able to join us at our public safety office soon, where you can tour the security operations center and be able to see these new um, upgraded uh, technology that we brought into the CCTV program access and key control, and also our other physical infrastructure protection systems include fencing, intrusion detection alarms. And our new initiative coming forward is we will be doing extensive studies of crime prevention through environmental design at three of our transit centers to see if there's ways to, to create new treatments and environmental treatments for our riders so they feel safer in those environments, such as improving the lighting in the area so you don't have dark pockets at night so people feel safer approaching our transit centers. Next slide. Here is our um, activity report for our proof of payment activity. In 2020, we had over 12,000 warnings issued, significantly up from the previous year, and 
their citations issued 3180 significantly down from the previous year. And this was due to COVID. So 80% less by, less their citations from fiscal year 2019, 361 increase in warnings do not to cite, but educating and informing our riders. There was 97% less citations resolved through administrative options in fiscal year 2019. I gotta go back. The increase in warnings are a result of the behavior change model in COVID. We uh, pushed out warnings All right, issued. wait. Warnings issued 12,000. This is 12,000. 3,100 citations. So wait a minute. Uh, wait. <coughs> Out of three thousand, wait a minute. Out of three thousand citations, this is all the people that eight, nine, twenty-two, seventy-seven. Out of three thousand fair citations, a <laughs> hundred people use. Use the TriMet uh, system to uh, settle their funds. <laughs> That's like nothing, man. That's like nothing. So everybody, what did everybody else do? For first offense violations in an effort to gain cooperation in providing identification. <laughs> the result, no law enforcement support in obtaining identification. Fine, so right as we know, we have not had our law enforcement partners uh, participate with our fair missions. So our fair inspectors have used more of a cooperation method to try and gain information from our riders. Education over enforcement approach was during all of COVID impacts. Next slide. Oh, how generous. This uh, chart denotes the number of assaults on employees, uh, supervisors, and contractors on our system. I know there's been a lot of emphasis about operator assaults, but all of our employees are at risk to assaults on the system. No shit. And the data is compiled through our accident incident database, and you can see there is a significant trend upwards. Um, we have seen this um, result yeah. due to... There has been a tremendous amount of violence uh, on the TriMet. So let's see. Wait a minute. Oh, this isn't now. This is only 2020. A lot of, uh, I think a lot of non-presence of other riders on our system. People feel more safe on our system when there's more riders present. And if you are alone and you don't have that protection, sometimes it can put you in a, in a dangerous situation. So we always like... Um, High visibility presence of our staff. We like a lot of presence of our riders, and with our having the amount of ridership decline, we seem to see more of these incidents rise. Next slide. Other security initiatives that we have for fiscal year 21. We really are focusing on behavior change. We will continue doing the warnings and ed education for the first offense violations. Um, during this time of COVID for the, the remainder of this year. Uh, we're hoping to reduce operator assaults. All of our staff that are frontline staff out on the system are really working to try and educate and, and create um, better behavior of our riders so that our operators and our employees are not um, assaulted. And obviously, uh, riders feel safe when staff are present, as I mentioned, therefore- All we right, what have we got here? Okay, focus on behavior change, warnings and education. For fair violence. Fuck the fair! Fuck them! You stupid fucks! Fucking just... Fuck. They're so off base. Increased rider perception of safety of the system through high visit. What? Uh, expanded tr annual training to include reimagined public safety bias work, unconscious bias work, emotional intelligence. What the fuck? <sighs> Garbage. Focusing on efforts to increase staff presence, which is a combination of TriMet staff and security staff. We have expanded our annual training and recertification to include the reimagined public safety recommendations for security and frontline staff. 
And that includes bias busting at work, unconscious bias, emotional intelligence. Uh, and yes, I'm sorry to report this. There are racists at TriMet. I'm sorry. It's the truth. I was there when I was there, and I'm sure it's still there. Mental health first aid and microaggressions. Microaggressions. Like, what is this nonsense? Question. And that concludes my report, and I would be happy to entertain any questions. Do any of the speakers have questions for um, um, Marla Bragg? Kathy? Um, Director yes, Marla, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Marla, for the presentation. Um, I thought it was very thorough. I just have two questions. Um, the first question is around the um, the unarmed um, unit that we're using um, to, uh, uh, you know, provide more safety um, to our riders. Um, do they carry um, business cards on them or just ID? Um, in case someone has an issue and they want to report it to TriMet for further um, remediation or assistance. I know that the armed officers carry um, that, so I was just wondering for um, the sake of customer service and experience. That's a great question, Director Way. I'm not sure if my security director is on the line, Pat Williams or Justin Dillon. Are you on the sure. line where you can answer that question? If not, we'd be happy to uh, get that response to you by the end of the day. Uh, sure, <clears throat> that would be helpful. Um, and then just my second uh, question was around the um, the reimagining um, security, safety, that work that um, obviously put a lot of um, that put a lot of work and effort last year in building that up. And just wondering how, and I'm sorry if you've already mentioned this, but just how that work or, you know, that committee will um, continue to provide either guidance or oversight or um, whatever it is to um, the safety and security work. Yes, thank you. Um, so Marissa Clark is our new senior community engagement coordinator who will be um, coordinating the efforts for the community advisory committee. It's my understanding that recruitment is undergoing right is underway right now and we are looking to identify partners in the three county region who are um, doing this work so that we're not duplicating efforts and that we can actually leverage our resources and work together. As you know, we are not um, social service workers or experts in this area. So we were really looking towards getting the subject matter experts to join us and to guide us and to advise us. So we're looking forward to having, hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, the new first uh, meeting in fall of this year. Perfect. And so our, have committee members, they have already been selected and they're ready to go in the fall, or are you still looking to recruit um, folks to join? The, yeah, I believe the recruitment is still open, and we welcome anybody to apply. And I believe there's additional information on the Reimagine Public Safety here, website um, on our TriMet right. webpage. I'm getting distracted. Oh, my God. We'll just if, end it um, if you have additional questions, feel free to reach out to me directly, and I'd be happy to provide more information, such as what the application process is. Excellent. Thank you so much. Any further questions? Thank you, Marla. All right. That's a good place to stop it. Um, all right. I don't have anything to say in conclusion here. Cut. <laughs>